This video is sponsored by Lecturio. Is it time to lead or is it time to die? Time to raise hello or gone by. Is there anybody out there that's playing a tennis sign? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And today I'm back on campus. I'm walking through Eastern Avenue. This is like the main strip where all the students are. And you have a bunch of like lecture theaters and different buildings for classes. So I spent a lot of time in undergrad here. But currently I'm going towards Fisher Library to meet some friends. We're gonna do a big group study session because we've got exams in two and a half weeks. Should be a lot of fun, trying to get a lot done. And I'll catch you in a bit. Alright guys, so I picked up my coffee. I got a large flat white. I usually don't drink coffee, but today I'm feeling a little bit tired, so hopefully this wakes me up. But like I said, we have our final exam in two and a half weeks, and it's pretty much going to cover everything that we've done this year and last. And I think I forgot a lot of first year content, so that's definitely gonna be the difficult part for me. I arrive at the library and meet up with my friends Declan and Alex at our usual study booth. We start working through some quiz questions together and come across a few difficult pathologies, one of them being congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or CAH for short. We learn that the most common type of CAH involves a defective gene for 21 hydroxylates, an enzyme needed for the synthesis of aldosterone and cortisol. Because these patients don't have this enzyme, they usually present with vomiting due to salt wasting and extreme virilization due to excess androgen production. I find doing group study like this very helpful because we can discuss our reasoning behind each question and if someone is stronger in a specific topic, it gives them the chance to teach and help out the group. A few hours later, we make our way out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so we just finished with the study and we were covering a bunch of practice questions um, for endocrine, physiology and pathology and honestly all the different um, type 2 diabetic drugs like the gliptins, the flozins, putting that into my head is going to be a bit of a struggle but currently we're on our way to lunch and we're going to grab some Thai food. All right guys, so we just got to ABS and we found a little study room. We have a finals exam coming up in two and a half weeks and it's 120 questions covering all 10 blocks that we've done. So what's that? It's like renal, oncology. Yeah, cardiology, resp. Foundations, so yeah. there's so many things. And if you calculate all the lectures, seminars, pracs that we got covered, it's probably like over 500. 500 yeah. yeah, 500 easy. It's wild. And compressing that into 120 questions is gonna be a bit difficult, so we'll see how it goes. Then after that, we're having a two-week clinical intensive, which means we're going to be going to the hospital, learning how to take histories, getting used to all the physical examinations. And then we'll be having our OSCEs afterwards. We're going to be put into about six scenarios, and they'll put a patient, and we might have to take a history from them. We might have to perform, say, like a thyroid exam or a... Um, what's the most... Maybe like a peripheral Cardiology limb... Exam. Ca ca like a cardio exam or a peripheral limb examination. Yeah. And that's more of the interesting stuff, because we're actually putting theory into the context. But we're going to keep smashing out these practice questions. In terms of the practice questions that we're doing, we're doing questions from Lecturio, who's also kindly sponsoring this video. I'll talk about them a bit later. Dampens, it dampens the immune system. Yeah. Dampens your like blood clotting factors, so you bruise yeah. easily, and it impairs wound healing. Oh yeah. It causes you can, you increased can think about osteoclast it. activity. If you increased your gluconeogenesis, 
you'd get diabetes. It's, it's going to be the catabolic. What do one adrenal receptors do? So that's the one that vasoconstrict. They vasodilate or constrict? Vasoconstrict. So would you want vasoconstriction in a stressed response? Probably because you're trying to. That's why I'm thinking increased blood pressure. Simulation of fire. I, I, I think it's. I think it's. Yeah, let's just go with that one. It's 100. percent It's good. Look, look. Yeah, yeah cool. let's we got go. It. Got it. Go. Yeah, you know. so what's going on, mate? Having that 3:30 nap, you know. Yeah, no. Tired. <laughs> Alex, help me. <laughs> Ugh. No, man, I don't need to stop. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're just sitting out for a quick five-minute break, and we've been going through. <laughs> we've been going. We've been going through a bunch of different practice questions about like all the different nephropathies and glomerular nephritis syndromes that you'd have, and that's the reality of medical school, I guess. That there's going to be so much information, right? And you're not going to be able to remember everything. And so generally, there's this rule. It's called like the Pareto principle or the 80/20 rule where 20% of the theory will give you 80% of the yield. And if you're preparing for your own exam, um, the best thing that I can suggest is to get started early, to start preparing your study schedule, focus on the high yield stuff, and then if you have the time, go down and learn those little niche facts. It really depends on the day of the week, but it also depends on like where you're up to. Like often I work a lot harder like in the start of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll put a lot of time in just trying to get really on top of things so that I feel good about the week. I think around exam time, yeah, I'll be doing upwards of, you know, 10, 12 hours. I don't want to look back and be like, oh, I could have prepared better or whatever. Yeah, guys, it's all about small wins. You want to make little small wins every day to get you going. And also think about learning, not just for learning's sake, but how you can apply it later on in your job, in your career. And I'll really give you the motivation to actually get into it because you know that it'll be useful later on. My, my mindset is to, to make sure I'm being really efficient with my time. So I like to try and set up my, my calendar at the start of the week on a Sunday night or Monday morning and just plan out what I'm doing for the week across three or four hour blocks. In terms of maybe non-exam times, just depends on how much you got to do and there's always more you can do. So it's kind of about finding a balance. But as I study, it's kind of like um, I'll do as much as I need to, to be comfortable that I'm going to pass the exam, but also that I'll be a competent doctor in the future, hopefully. All right, that's the end of our session. We just got out of ABS. So we're on our way to the train now. We're getting on at Redfern Station and gonna make the bit of a long trip back home. Hopefully peak hour isn't too bad. Alright guys, so I'm back home now. I made the train trip back and I've unpacked my things and I'm starting to feel a little bit tired. The morning coffee that I had is slowly wearing off. I think the half-life for caffeine is about eight hours, so it's probably almost around that time now. And I'm gonna try crack on and do a little bit more study. And recently I've been using Lecturio to study, who is a kind sponsor of today's video. And I just wanna tell you a little bit about them. So if you've never heard of Lecturio, it's essentially an online platform that has a video library, it has question banks, it has space repetition, and it's very comprehensive. It pretty much covers all the organ systems, basic science, pathology, pharmacology, physiology. It's been very, very helpful, and I've been using it for the last couple of weeks to prepare for my exam. And I wanna quickly show you about how I've been using it and what it looks like. So looking at the homepage, you can see a study planner, question of the day, video library, and question bank. 
and if you have a topic that you're learning about, chances are Lecturio will have it covered. And I really like it because the playlists are structured in a way that makes sense. Each of these playlists you can add to your study planner if you're only looking at, say, diabetes, or you're only looking at thyroid gland disorders, you can select them and add them to your study plan. I might want to review glucose homeostasis, and I'll give you all the high yield principles that will be clinically relevant. But what I also like is it's not just the video. So when you finish the video, they'll give you a bunch of quiz questions. And so this question is which one of the following does not occur in a person in a state of fasting? So if you're fasting, you're expected to have increased gluconeogenesis, your glucagon is going to be going in overdrive. The thing you're not probably going to do is increase glycolysis. So I'll select this and I'm feeling confident about it. And that's the correct answer. And what's cool about the quiz questions is that they go to your space repetition bank. And so having a look at my own, I have 653 quiz questions in my deck. And I like it because it makes sure that you're constantly being exposed to the material that you covered from previous weeks. And another feature that I want to show you guys is the question bank. And so once you go onto this page, you can create a custom test. And I only want to be doing the endocrine and renal system. And it's going to give me 168 questions in this question pool. And so when I start the quiz, I have my STEM and then I have my five options. As you're reading through it, you can actually highlight important bits of information. 28 year old man, blood pressure of this, his pulse is 114 per minute. Which of the following relative lab findings would you most likely expect to find in this patient? He's extremely hypoglycemic at the moment and they found a tumor in the pancreas. Because we're seeing such a hypoglycemic state, it's most likely secreting a lot of insulin. So on lab findings, I'm expecting to see a low glucose, so that's option A or C. And we're expecting to see an increase in C-peptide because insulin is being hypersecreted. And ketoacidosis, we're probably not expecting it. So I'm leaning towards option C and let's see if that's correct. And it is. What's really, really cool about it is they give you a comprehensive explanation. So it tells you that insulinoma is the most likely diagnosis. It gives you related videos and book references to what information you should know. And if you can go through this, some of these questions are really difficult, but they're extremely helpful because they tie in all the different concepts that you're learning about into one clinical scenario. So if you're thinking about checking out Lecturio, I'd suggest going down in the description box using my coupon code SebastianPeri35, and that'll give you 35% off the three month and 12 month plans. So be sure to check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to my computer and then try smash out the rest of the endocrine videos on Lecturio. I finished off the endocrine Lecturio videos and I'm heating up some dinner now. And a lot of you guys ask me, hey Seb, how do you stay motivated and bothered to keep studying, especially when you're tired? And right now I'm considering the fact that I'm only about two and a half weeks away from exams. So if I just think of it, it's a short amount of time. It's only 17 or 18 days. If I knuckle down, I can truly reward myself with the break afterwards. It'll feel fulfilling. And if you don't work hard and you just do the exam, the break's not gonna be the same. It's not gonna be deserved. And so I think as long as you acknowledge that it's a short time and two, that whatever you're learning now, it's gonna be relevant in the long run. That's what it keeps me going. So it is a Wednesday and I usually upload my YouTube videos every Thursday. So right now I am editing a new video, which is gonna go live on YouTube tomorrow. And by the time that you guys see this, it should already be up. So I'm gonna link it somewhere here. It's on my honors experience, so be sure to check it out to support the channel. So every week I have to dedicate some time to edit these videos for you guys. So I try to do it nighttime after I've finished off my study. Hopefully I can smash it out within the hour. Well, I just finished editing the video. It is ready to render and I will upload it to YouTube sometime tomorrow. And my mates just messaged me then saying that they're gonna place some Among Us. So I'm gonna join them. And I've got about two hours left in the night. It's 10 o'clock currently. to just veg out and relax. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out Lecturio. They have awesome videos, a really comprehensive QBank. So be sure to click on the link in the description below and use my coupon code SebastianPiri35 to get 35% off three and 12 month memberships. Well, that's gonna wrap up the end of the vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun spending time with my mates, Alex and Declan. It was such a refreshing change from just being in my room. And if you're also preparing for an upcoming exam or assignment, best of luck. I'll be busy studying for the next couple of weeks, so I might be a little bit more quiet on YouTube, but I'll be back again soon. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe and do all that good stuff. And until next time, this is Sebastian. Stay sharp.